there, I'm Chrissy. You found my YouTube channel, Chrissy Love. I review fragrance. And today I am doing a huge Dua haul. So Dua is a company that does a lot of dupes and their own personal releases as well. They just release perfumes like crazy, like, you know, upwards of 10 a year. And so I am constantly perusing their selection, both on Phenom Perfumes, where you can get sample sizes, which is like their sister website, or on Dua.com, the normal website. So I'll link both those in the description below for you so you can check them out. I always recommend getting samples of anything because you never know what you're gonna get. They're usually pretty good dupes, but not always, as I learned. So I have seven Dua perfumes I am hauling today. So thanks for being here. Thanks for subscribing and liking and commenting. It all means a lot to me to see you participate with me in this fragrance community. And I am up in my game because I'm now posting scent of the day videos to TikTok and Instagram, and I'm posting here twice a week. So I am all in your face with fragrance reviews these days. So let's jump right into my seven perfume Dua haul. So I have been on a cotton candy kick lately when it comes to perfume. I'm actually going to be filming a video soon about cotton candy specific perfumes. So I'm super excited about that too. But speaking of cotton candy, I'm starting off with Cotton Candy De Dua, which just came out this year, 2021. And this is what the box looks like in the bottle. And this has notes of vanilla, cotton candy, white musk, and of course, sponge sugar. And on my skin, when I first spray this, Honestly, it has kind of Pepto-Bismol vibes. It's a little bit chalky, synthetic sweetness, but still kind of candy-like, but it gets a lot better in the dry down because that's where I get caramel cotton candy. No lie, it is really that good. It's really creamy, but it has kind of this brightness, kind of like you imagine pink cotton candy having. A little, like, it's a little bit sweet, a little bit tart, a little bit juicy but it's really not syrupy. It's not like a pink sugar type thing. It's not syrupy or licorice or anything like that. It's, it's a really bright caramelic cotton candy scent. Um, absolutely delectable, absolutely gourmand. This is a really fun one. It also has beast mode performance, the best of all the perfumes I'm reviewing today. So definitely check out Cotton Candy De Dua. It is not a dupe. It is a Dua original formulation. And as far as cotton candy goes, it is a really good showing. So that is Cotton Candy De Dua. Next I have Drowning in Vanilla, which is a dupe of Nishani Ani, which is a pretty prolific perfume in its own right. And the notes on this are vanilla, bergamot, ginger, pink pepper, Turkish rose, cardamom, green notes, cedar, benzoin, ambergris, sandalwood, black currant, musk, and patchouli. I haven't smelled Nishani Ani, I really want to, but when I first spray it on my skin, I get lime and cedar. It's really masculine. And even on this card right now, that's really what I'm getting with a hint of creaminess underneath. So in the dry down, it's really a slightly spicy vanilla with just a bit of that cedar note hanging on for dear life. It's not quite leaving me. It's interesting, it's kind of like an androgynous but still sweet vanilla. It's really intriguing actually. I think it's it's really enticing. It kind of like has a little bit of this like cedar and spice and lemon, but it still has this lactonic vanilla in there. So it's, I don't know if it smells much like Nishani Ani because I haven't smelled that, but it is a really intriguing scent. And I think it would be really great on a man or a woman. And it's just, it's kind of sexy. It's kind of nice date night or nighttime scent. Um, it's alluring. Yeah, so this is one where it's not a profile I would normally subscribe to, but I'm gonna give this more of a try, especially we're getting into cooler months. I think it'll be really lovely for that. Performance-wise, it has really good longevity and projection. It's not like beast mode, but it really does last all day, and it does project for most of the day. So really can't complain about that either. So check this one out. That is Drowning in Vanilla. Now I have Caramel Delight, which I have in a little sample size. And this is a dupe of Zhirzhoff Lyra. And the notes in this are bergamot, blood orange, lavender, jasmine, cinnamon, licorice, musk, vanilla, and caramel. And when I first get this on my skin, I get major salt water taffy vibes. It is creamy and sweet and salty and yum, 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 yum. 
and the dry down, I get salted caramel and doll's head. So this happens a lot with the duo perfumes I found where they get kind of like a plastic synthetic-y doll's head smell coming in. And, and by the way, I, these have all macerated for more than two weeks in my home. So I don't think it's that. I, I, don't, I think this is just like a note I pick up on duo quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so this is like doll's head with salted caramel, but it's really milky and it has a feeling of tonka, like a depth and grounding that's really gorgeous in it. So the doll's head doesn't really bother me so much because I actually really love the sexy gourmand nature of it. It's like right on the verge of being gourmand, but it's it's not, tr it's food like because it smells like caramel, but it's not like it smells like a very specific dessert or anything. Mm. But it definitely reads as sweet and delicious and delectable. And I really like the saltiness in this. I don't usually like it when there's a lot of salt in perfumes, but this just like gives it a little bit of tang, a little bit of like extra goodness that just makes it uh, more interesting. Performance wise, it's also good. Like it lasts all day and it projects nicely. So no issues with performance whatsoever. So if you like like a salt water, taffy, caramel vibe, and you don't mind a little bit of like a doll's head smell in there, this is a really fun one mm, and perfect for when you're trying to get cozy in the cold months. So that is Caramel Delight. Next, I have Beauteous Delight, which is a dupe of Dior's Feve Delicieuse, which I have smelled, but it's been a little while. So I don't know if I can really accurately compare them, but I can tell you what this one smells like. <laughs> so the top notes are mint and lavender. The middle notes are cherry, freesia, and Egyptian jasmine. And the base notes are leather, milk, praline, cacao pod, sandalwood, tonka bean, caramel, vanilla, and cedar. And this is really funny. When I first spray this on my skin, I get cherry popsicle, which is fun, right? Like I get, I get cherry icy popsicle. Um, and then the dry down, it's this lovely cherry lip gloss with amber. It's kind of sexy and dramatic and luscious. This is definitely my kind of cherry. I don't like just outward full on bang cherry. I like it to have some depth to it. And this is that in spades. It's like ambery and mellow, but enticing. And that cherry just makes it pop a little bit. Mm, the cherry definitely runs the show in this one. It is absolutely delicious. Performance wise, it's the worst of all of them, but still pretty good. So I would say, you know, I, I can't really complain. It lasts all day, but doesn't project quite as well as the others, but you know, you'll have that. <laughs> so that is Beauteous Delight. This one was of real interest to me. This is Satin Midnight Attar, which is a dupe of Maison Francis Kirk de John's Oud Satin Mood X-Ray, which I really love. It's one of my favorite perfumes. It has this kind of mystical quality you can't pin down, but we're gonna try. So off of their website here, their notes are Tunisian Rose, Geranium, Cinnamon from Ceylon, Turkish Rose, Benzoin, Vanilla, Laotian Oud, Amber, and Violet Accord. And I get burnt plastic notes right out the gate when I first spray it on my skin. But that doesn't last very long. It lasts for like a minute, so don't worry. But the dry down, this is a really, really good dupe. It's, it's sweet and woody and incensey and just like mellow and intoxicating. So like what notes does it really smell like? I get the cinnamon, I get the geranium for sure, but it kind of transcends all of those notes. It just turns into something really magical. It's it's so hard to describe. It's like a midnight garden. It's 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 there's something really ethereal about it that kind of dances on your skin and it has really great performance, just like the original Maison Francis Kirk de John version has. And it just like really emanates off of you. It's it's just totally intoxicating. Mm. Yeah, I think the only difference is you can slightly smell the difference in quality with the duo because it's a little bit more harsh. Like it's 100% dupe, but it's like a little more harsh. Whereas the original has this softness that kind of plays around you. Um, but it does smell exactly like it. And gosh, the other perfume is just so darn expensive that this is a great deal for such an amazing dupe. Mm. Yeah, it's just beautiful. That oud is coming out a little bit. It's it's absolutely intoxicating, but really hard to describe, I'll be honest. So if you've, if you've tried this and can describe it better than me, please let me know if you can pick out any notes because it is just a wonder how it all blends together just so beautifully. So that is Satin Midnight Attar.
Now I have Tonkalicious, which I got because it is a dupe for Guerlain's Tonka Imperial, which I sprayed on myself like a little sample size of the original about a month ago and was like, oh, that's all right. It's kind of masculine. And then I let it sit on my skin and was just completely falling in love minute by minute. So I was like, oh, if I can get another version of this, I am in. That's affordable. <laughs> so the notes on this are Tonka Bean, Spices, Amber, Bergamot, Olibanum, Almond, Rosemary, Jasmine, Vanilla, Cedar, and Pine Tree. And on first spray, it smells like maple syrup and plastic. It has that kind of plasticky vibe again. But in the dry down, it gets really gorgeous. It is resinous, it's syrupy, it's sweet. It has this kind of cupcakey vanilla scent actually that the original doesn't really have. So it's almost like a, a sweeter candy version of the original. Um, but it is gorgeous. Actually, it gives me on the card a little bit of a cherry vibe. There's a little bit of like a levity in there, a little bit of not fruitiness, but a little bit of zest of something. So in conclusion, Tonkalicious is a little bit sweeter than the original Tonka Imperial, but it is absolutely just as decadent and beautiful. Now we have the grand finale, and this is my favorite of the whole bunch, most surprisingly. It definitely impressed me, and I bought it just based on the notes, and it was very excited when I got my nose on it. That is Cafe de Dua, which is an original blend, and you'll never believe these notes. Roasted biscotti, toasted caramel cookies, lemon cake, roasted Colombian coffee beans, cacao, bitter almond, maple sap, Madagascar vanilla, vanilla bean, and amber. And this is through and through on me a hazelnut latte. I know it says almond, but to me this reads as hazelnut. And the nuttiness is the most forward scent in it, followed very quickly behind by the coffee. And it's sweet, it smells like there's a little bit of spice on top, maybe some cinnamon on top of my latte. Mm. It is decadent, gourmand, realistic, and it stays that way on my skin too. It just smells delicious on my skin. It lasts all day, it projects all day, absolutely gorgeous. This is one that just got the combination just right. I don't know if they actually got essence of lemon cake and essence of roasted biscotti. Like, what does that even mean as a perfume note? Because usually that would be the result of multiple perfume notes. So I'm not sure what they're thinking with those notes, but all I can say is this is a hazelnut latte in a bottle and I am here for it. I'm so excited to wear this for fall and winter because it's gonna be cozy. And that is Cafe de Dua to round us out. This has been a total blast. I love Dua and I intend to keep sampling Dua until the end of their days because I just love them so much. So let me know which of these you think you'd be interested in trying or what your favorite Dua fragrance is. Thanks so much for being here and have a very beautiful day.